So I was in a wheelchair for about a year. And my PT looked at me and she said, you know, Matt, there's things beyond just recovery. And so your goal is not to recover well, but to live well. And, you know, I, it was a very hard moment for me. I said, well, I'm still so disabled. This is all I know. She said, what do you love? What do you love doing? I said, well, I love climbing. You know, I love to climb, but I can't do it. She said, not only is it good for you in the moment, but it will help your neuroplasticity and your neural pathways rebuild themselves faster because you have muscle memory and brain memory of doing those actions, completing those tasks, climbing those walls, climbing the mountain, and that will encourage your brain to heal faster. So from, th from there I called Nick and I said, I think, you know, might be good to go back in the gym. He'd been waiting <laughs> for that call and immediately he said where and when. You know, at first it was very, it would take me an hour to get up, you know, a wall. Uh, and it still takes me quite a while, but it's recovery in the sky, as, as many people say. You know, it feels like recovery in the sky. Um, and, you know, uh, I feel it every every time I climb. I feel a little bit better, um, and what it again what it strengthens is that idea that it's possible, that things are possible, that life beyond recovery is possible. Um, so that's what I'm shooting for. I was really just waiting for him to make that call, uh, and um, uh, so in terms of helping him along in recovery, I knew that physically it would be really helpful for him to get back in the gym, to help relearn his balance, to help relearn the precision of placement, to help relearn, you know, just the, to strengthen those neural pathways back towards being able to complete the kind of complex movements that climbing required, as well as the stamina and the strength. But the most important thing, at least for my money, about it was the potential to help him mentally because climbing is, is such a mental, it's such a mental game. And um, it's so much of it is about recognizing your own ability to make your expectations higher, to exceed those expectations, to never accept a ceiling to be a ceiling and to keep pushing through it. And then to face your fear and your doubt. There's so much of that in the act of climbing. And to be able to get Matt back on, on that wall um, was everything. I mean, it was a very emotional experience, I think, for, for both of us. Watching him go through this trial has been incredibly humbling and inspiring. I've met a lot of disciplined, determined people who would have just crumbled at trying to face this thing uh, in the way that you have been able to do. Uh, and just to come at it head on and to just keep at it every single day and to win the physical battles when they're there and to win the mental battles when it's just like, I mean, I can't even imagine waking up with what you wake up with every day and watching your resiliency is a gift. Uh, and then CNS has helped I mean, incredibly, you know, I mean, like you, you, if you take somebody who has that kind of passion and that kind of energy, which the other thing I'm learning is that I think anybody is capable of that, you know, if given if given the right stuff to work with. Yeah. Um, and, and you'd be the biggest proponent of, of yeah. saying that, too. And like, you know, you take somebody with that much of a drive to get better and that much of a drive to heal like Matt has, they need somewhere to go to keep working on that. And CNS has given him all of those tools, has given him, you know, you said this earlier today, but like given the, given the, the full-time job of recovery, and my God, that's what it needs to be. Yeah. Um, and just knowing that there are so many people out there who don't have the resources that CNS has given to Matt is frustrating, to say the least, uh, because anybody who's having to deal with something like you're having to deal with deserves that kind of full-time attention and care and encouragement. And I've met these people at CNS and they're wonderful. Mm. Um, just in terms of being, creating the environment to recover in, creating the, the, the moral support, um, the professionalism, yeah. the sense that you're, 
even just the sense that you're getting the best care is huge, not just for you, but for us, for everybody around you. Yeah. So, you know, there is a counseling component, um, you know, often in the mountains, we're encouraging each other, you know, way beyond our breaking point, which is understanding one's psychology. And I think for me, re recovery started with the mind first, you know. So that counseling component was super important to get me to a place where I could even pick up the phone and, and call Nick and say, hey, I want to get back into it because I knew I would be comparing myself to where I was. And so what CNS Counseling did was repair my psychology enough that I could even make that call. And then once I was there, sure, the, the, the occupational therapy, the speech therapy, the uh, the cognitive recovery, the physical recovery, all came together for climbing. Um, you know, my lower body, body, obviously, climbing is so much in the legs. So having the balance to push up on my legs was something I couldn't do at the beginning. I had no feeling in my legs. So CNS, you know, demonstrated through their through their tireless efforts that I could get up and do that on my legs. And then with the arm, you know, in occupational therapy, the placement of and hand-eye coordination of my hand on the rock wall is super important. So I learned that in OT. And with cognitive recovery, the strategic, um, you know, climbing a wall is like a puzzle. So you're solving the puzzle as you go in midair. And that's where the cognate comes in. You know, it's it's sort of like the motor planning of it, the planning of it. So then I can get the motor component working. So really, all the disciplines come together when you're climbing, um, and uh, all of them I learned in CNS. Seven. Seven.